Hi, this screencast is going to highlight the latest features available in the Beta 10 release of the Web 4 module for Drupal 8. My name is Jacob Rockowitz. I'm known as Jay Rockowitz on the web. I'm a Drupal developer and software architect. I built and maintain the Web 4 module for Drupal 8. The goal of the screencast is to show you what's new. Submission management has been improved. Um, there used to be a submissions and table tab, and they've been merged into one view to make it a little easier for your users to see all the data that's coming in. Um, the view on submission permission was added. It was available in the D7 version of the Web4 module. Um, this has also led to the tracking of anonymous submissions, so anonymous user can see their previous submissions. And then this followed through with being able to create drafts for anonymous users, which was created by this user, um, BUCFAL91. And, and another follow through with that is being able to convert anonymous submissions to authenticated submissions, very similar to a shopping cart where you're not logged in and you start adding stuff to it. And when you log in, your shopping cart follows over into your authenticated account. Um, another enhancement, which Kenshaw State University has been sponsoring, is adding submission logging, which is just tracking all the events that are happening to an individual submission. For example, if it's been updated or draft saved or what emails are sent out, who the emails are sent out to. And I'll show it to you and it keeps a very specific log for each submission. Um, form settings have been enhanced for the web form nodes and when, whenever a web form is attached to an entity, you can now set an open and closed date time for that web form and you can customize the open and closed messages for a web form. Email handling has been significantly improved where you can route emails based on selected options. This feature is available for in Drupal 7. Um, another ability is you can send emails to specific roles. So for example, if you have a, an application process, a reviewer role, you can have an email go to all reviewers and it makes it a little easier to manage how emails are being routed. And this was also sponsored by Kenshaw State University. Another feature related to that was sending emails based on different submission states. So traditionally, emails were always sent when a web form submission was completed. But now you have the ability to send submissions when a draft is created, or a submission is updated, or even when it's deleted. And finally, there's a nice little enhancement to just customize the reply to and return path for emails. Most people don't do it. It defaults to the from email address, which is fine. Um, something I like in every release, I'm improving form elements. I added an image picker element. Um, hierarchical taxonomy term checkboxes have been added. At Stella helped with that. I added a map to the location composite element. That's optional. And also optional is to enhance checkboxes and radios using the iCheck library. Um, I'm going to demo some of these features to you. The submission UI is now much simpler. There's just one tab. Shows you all the submissions and all the values coming in. You can have your users customize this and select which elements they want displayed. This can handle hundreds of elements. If you have hundreds of elements, you probably want to customize this table. The view own sub submission permission is kind of hard to show, but I'd like to show the settings related to anonymous drafts and things related to that. So here, if we scroll down, there's the draft settings. You can say you want authenticated an anonymous user to be able to save drafts and then you have the ability to automatically purge submissions to ensure the database is not filled up with abandoned anonymous draft submissions. I also recommend turning on capture of honeypot for this feature. Um, and then in submission behaviors you can check off this box and this will convert anonymous user drafts and submissions to authenticated users. And submission logging is pretty easy to demo if we go to the contact form, click fill through and do a test. I'm going to hit send. I'm going to click back, I'm going to go to the results, and then there's this log and it's showing you all the events that are happening. And if I click through to this most recent submission, you can see that it was created and the notification and confirmation email was sent out. This is going to help with some more complex logic where we're remote posting data and we want to track the remote posts and see what data we get back. And I do need help working out this feature and deciding how we want to leverage this. And this log is never deleted. This is continuous. It stays with the submission. It's different than Drupal's default database log, which is purged and sometimes written to your system log. This is tied to your submissions and tracked through the entire life of your submission. It, it creates an audit trail, and I, I feel like that's a very important feature when you're starting to manage data. Um, the form settings improvements are pretty easy because you can go to add content and you can see when you go down here I've actually created this details element you can select your form but now you can open and schedule when this form will be displayed on this node. Uh, moving back 
going to the email handling, I created a feedback form, which the feedback form is very similar to the contact form, but it just has these radio buttons, these options. And if we go over to edit, go to handlers, and I click on this one, you're going to see that I've selected the type of feedback, which is those radio buttons, and I'm routing it to basically all the site mail because I don't have any users in this site, but you can go and customize this and enter different email addresses if someone's reporting a bug. You can even pass in a role token, the web form underscore role administrator, and for example, this bug report will go to all administrators of the site. And roles are also available in the drop-down menu where you could just say send an email to all authenticated users or administrators. And you do have to turn this feature on in the admin settings and select which roles can get email. It's really to prevent the web form module for sending spam to many users. Um, and this is the settings where you can send emails based on different submission states. When a draft is saved, anonymous submission is converted to authenticated, it's completed, updated, or deleted, and this is the reply to a return path. Exiting, I can also now show you the elements. Scroll down. The image picker is very quick because it's got cute little kittens. I don't see a lot of uses for this element, but if you were doing color swatches or any behaviors like that, it's useful. It also just opened up an API possibility of adding metadata to select elements because this is a select element in the background with images attached to it. And then this follow the follow up to this is adding richer select elements that track scores for quizzes and evaluations and things like that. Um, the hierarchical taxonomy terms is down here. It's very simple. It's just a scrollable box where you can check off different taxonomy terms and it shows you the hierarchy of those those terms. Um, and you are, are seeing the eye check enhancements already on these check boxes. I'm just turning it on in the demo. If I click back up, I can show you the map in the composite element. And you can see these maps will automatically get populated on the geolocation that I'm currently in. And you can also take this information and generate images that are included in your email of this specific location. So if you wanted to do some tracking, it can kind of help out with that. Um, that's a demo of all the new features. Um, I want to tell you what's next. And what's next is I'm presenting in DrupalCon Baltimore. Um, it's one of the first sessions on the first day. If you're going to DrupalCon, please come and say hi at the session and attend. And I'm also doing a BOF. The session is going to be kind of an intro, so if you're familiar with the Web4 module, you might want to skip that. But there's going to be a BOF the next day in the morning, um, kind of talking about the future of form builders for Drupal and the Web4 module. And you can definitely ask me questions then. Or if you see me at DrupalCon, feel free to pull me aside and ask me anything you want. And I think the, the question I want to ask you is, how can I help you with Web Forms in Drupal 8? I really want this module to succeed, and I want your projects to succeed using the Web4 module. Um, I provide a lot of training materials and support to help you get familiar with it with the videos. I can also do training directly to your team. Um, I would like people to start contributing to the module and building features or sponsoring features to be built into the module. If you need it for a specific project, feel free to contact me, and we can work together to create new features for the Web4 module. And yeah, I would like you to succeed and help contribute to your project. So yeah, contact me if you have any questions you need help or you're planning on a project for the Web4 module and need help scoping out and seeing if the Web4 module is the right fit for your project. Um, you can reach me on jrockwoods.com and read more about me. I'm jrockwoods at drupal.org. And I just want to say thank you. I hope you enjoy using the Web4 module.